On this episode of the Angle of Attack show, winter in Utah, we've left sunny California, not expecting to have to continue commercial pilot training in Utah as well. But I found another Piper arrow to fly, which gave me the chance to continue growth toward my eventual goal of becoming a commercial pilot. Come follow along for an inside look at my flight training. My home, Alaska, is also home to some of the last true aviators. My mission, grow as an aviator through flying with my neighbors and friends in the backcountry and beyond. At times I'll strike out on my own, even outside the 49th state, seeking new experiences, growing skills, staying sharp, and practicing safety. Jump aboard and ride along in this, another chapter of my aviation story. I've been working on my commercial pilot training in sunny Southern California. The things didn't quite work out with some weather that got in the way and some maintenance issues. So now I would be delayed in getting my certificate. But I had a friend come up from LA. His name is Dion Mitten. He's a famous Instagram photographer and we enjoyed taking pictures at Santa Paula Airport. And we also met this character. See you guys. Chelsea and I already had built into our trip a visit to Salt Lake City after California, but because of the delays of my training, I'd be attempting to do some work in Salt Lake City while I was there as well. I'm not sure if this looks good, except that I always look good. Just kidding, that's not true. So this is the first time that Apollo Ray our son would be meeting his namesake, Ray, my stepfather. <laughs> that was a yawn. Yay, hey, boy. Now, it's a little different in Utah than it was in California, but weather out of the way, I was going to try to go for it anyway. Now, before I even left California, I searched for options on who I could go train with and keep up the momentum to get through my commercial training. I ended up finding this school called Axiom Aviation in Ogden, Utah, that just so happened to have the exact same Piper Arrow that I was flying in California. So I could continue the knowledge that I've been gaining about the airplane, the feel I was gaining for the airplane, and I could practice that while I was in Utah, and then later I would be returning to California to finish up my commercial training. So I had an aircraft check out in the Piper Arrow with Axiom Aviation from one of their young flight instructors, and he did a great job giving me some configuration ideas on the airplane. He had me get all configured by midfield downwind, and that meant gear down, a notch of flaps, and everything else configured, and I just felt like everything was moving a little bit slower, and it worked out much better. Now this was my first flight with Axiom, but I'd come back later and be able to solo the airplane for the first time. So even in California, I wasn't able to solo the airplane where I basically had the pattern to myself and I could just practice power off 180 accuracy landings over and over and over again. I think I ended up doing 25 of them in one flight. Here is a real time example of one of those. So although you see the camera angles cutting back and forth, this is real time. So you can see how long it takes to drift down. The airplane does glide pretty well, but it's still a different sight picture. And this is what Michael was talking about when he told me I was dawdling. If you remember that in the previous episode, you really have to get the arrow in there and aim for the numbers. And I was really getting it dialed in, as you can see here, landing right on my touchdown markers, right where I wanted to be. That's pretty good progress. Okay, so I just got done flying. Um, man, I did probably 20 touch and goes. I'll have to go back and count. I feel like I was really starting to dial in my power off 180s. I noticed that it was very different going to the left. I just, I felt slower. Everything was a little bit different. So my power off 180s are awesome. They went really well. Overall, some really good work. I enjoyed myself today. It's really good to get back in the air finally. I've been waiting for this weather to clear up. Yeah, I'm just encouraged. I'm happy. It's exactly what I needed after a week and a half of not flying. And now that the weather is clearing up, I've got to hit it pretty hard. On the following day, I had the opportunity to fly from Ogden up to Logan, Utah 
in Cache Valley where I did my private pilot with Utah State University. So this was kind of a step back in time coming full circle. Uh, uh, next Thursday. Oh, so you're almost done with your commercial? Yeah. Close at least. Man, they didn't have any of this stuff. Very nice. How do you like the diamond? It's awesome. Now, this is all new to me because when I was here, we were flying 152s and not any of this fancy stuff. As cool as these fancy new airplanes are, as I was looking around the hangar, I noticed this gem sitting back in the corner. I couldn't believe my eyes. This is one of the 152s that I used to fly. Weird, man. Weird. can't tell you how many great memories I had in the fleet of 152s that Utah State University has. And uh, I always enjoyed flying with my tall instructor, Lindsay Winter, cramming in this airplane and just having a, a ball of a time. We just, the other air up. Uh, it was kind of fun because we turned off all the GPSs and everything, so we were just doing dead reckoning. So I had my flight plan up that I wrote out, and we're just holding headings and stuff. We we guess how far we were from airports. Yeah. I'll bet that's nine miles out. We'd see how close we could get guessing, then we'd flip the page in the GPS to see where we actually were. Now it's been about 14 years since I was doing my private pilot training, and I remember driving to the airport eating packs of uncooked ramen noodles and then I'd get a Mountain Dew when I got there and and doing my weight and balance and going through a ground lesson with my instructor. Just so many great memories and those formative days will always stick with me. So this is where I fell in love with aviation. I just took a little tour and I had a lot of great memories here. Fantastic instructors, always well maintained airplanes. These guys got nice airplanes after I left of course. I got to fly 152s, but overall, I just really enjoyed this place. Really glad I stopped by today. And now I'll jump in the arrow and head back home, back to Ogden, and do some maneuvering along the way. So yeah, it's been a great day, great beautiful day. Lots of good memories here. It seemed like the stars were starting to align because not only was I getting to do a lot of flying in Utah, the flying was going quite well, and I was getting proficient with the airplane. On my last flight in the banana colored arrow, I would go up with my friend Andrew Landau, who was working on his private numbers. pilot, so he could kind of see the process I was going through. I thought there were mutual benefits kinda for both huh? of us to be it is there. Different, yeah. So over the next few minutes, you'll see us going through many of the commercial maneuvers, starting with the power off 180s. Dude, that was pretty legit. Yeah, that was right on, wasn't it? That was definitely within tolerances. So 736 Bob Yankee, one able, make an early right crosswind. Make an early right crosswind, enable, six Bob Yankee. Should have enough energy to make those numbers. Oh. Just a little too short. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll do one more lap around this little guy over here. And then we'll call it good, because that's just too easy. You and I are one of a small percentage of people that have ever soloed an aircraft. I know, yeah. And then it's not even that, it's it's a small percentage of people that will ever, in yeah. the future, solo an aircraft. Yeah, it's, it's just pretty wild. Let it fall through, that altitude back. Should be right on airspeed, right on altitude, right about the road, and then we go into the next one. Yeah, that's fun. There's our 360. Make sure it doesn't balloon up, but we can let it balloon up a little bit, then we'll snap into the next one. Lost my altitude there, that wasn't a good. A little bit. Yeah, dude, I lost my altitude. Oh. Just busted my check ride. Okay, we'll roll out here again, and then I think I need more power for this maneuver. I just don't feel like I have enough. Lighten it back. You got it. 
at you. One by one, I was becoming proficient with the commercial maneuvers, albeit at a higher density altitude, where I could then take this knowledge later on to California and hopefully finish up well. But it was clear that regardless of what I was trying, I was making measured progress. Yeehaw. Here you go. That was good. You were plus or minus 50. Yeah, that was good. Bet that there. I messed with trim for me, so it's yeah, different than what you you're think you're doing. You're doing better gonna... than I did. Finally, the airplane flies right. <laughs> All right, so I'm supposed to do 30 degrees of bank first, then add full power and start to pitch up. And then you roll out on the 180. It's about right there. And then you have to recover without losing altitude. But this is like, honestly, this is the hardest part of it. It's the recovering without. Yeah, because you've got to like nurse it back. Yep. Just right on the point? Yep, it's right at the, the south end of the point there. It's not even on a chart. I have a friend, Mark Monroe from Homer, who flies down here during the winter and spots brine shrimp, and he told me about the oh, right runway there. that they use in the winter. Yep, you can see a couple of airplanes. There's a red one. It's up more on the hill on the other side of the road. Yep. It's parallel to us. Do you see it? Yep, yep. That's cool. Yeah, that'd be fun, wouldn't it? My controls. Your controls. Dude, that's a legit runway. Like, it, we yeah, could that's do cool. We could do it in this. I know we can't, just legally, like not legally, but insurance-wise. Right. Wow, I wonder if he lives in a camper. I bet that's his one, red 172 down there. Oh, there are a couple other white airplanes. Yeah, I saw those too. Cool. Yeah, cool. Cool. Yeah. Having fun? Perfect way to spend a Saturday morning. <laughs> Grateful that it actually worked out that we got to spend some time together while you're I here. I know, man. I just looked at my schedule. And I, I got a flight anyway. I'm feeling pretty good. I don't really want to fly with an instructor, so let's yeah. just do it. Kirby's flying along. I get. I kind of get bored flying along. Yeah. That's a nice plane to fly. Yeah, just, once, once you get it trimmed up and everything's working well, then... Yeah, it just flies. Yeah, it works out pretty well. Yeah. So after a very enjoyable flight, we went back to Ogden. I pounded the pavement a little bit more, doing some more power off 180s, just getting more used to that. And it was a really good time. I was starting to enjoy the airplane, not behind it anymore, really dialing things in, and everything was coming together. Still within tolerances. Yep. Oh, that was fun, dude. That was fun. Thanks. I'm kind of like coming to the pinnacle of my abilities here. I'm able to hit those power offs pretty consistently. Yeah. My other maneuvers were going well. For some reason, I was struggling with the steep turns today, which is usually one of my strong suits. Oh, we cheated death once again. <laughs> I really lucked out that Axiom Aviation had this great arrow that I could use while I was there in Utah. And now we would be headed back south to California, away from the snow, and back to another opportunity to finish my commercial pilot training. Now, things just kind of worked out. They started to roll in the right direction. I was able to get some time in the airplane. I was able to get proficient in that airplane and really started to get my head in the game to finish off this commercial pilot license. This was also starting to become a stressor on the family because we were spending a lot more time away from home than we had originally planned. But my mission, my goal, was to get this commercial pilot rating done. And that's what I was going to do. And so here I was, back in California, with high hopes to move forward and finish this thing off right. 
A big thanks to Axiom Aviation for the great airplane to fly in Utah. Also, my good friend Mike Rushforth for the stellar music. Do you dream of being an aviator? Start your journey today at aviatortraining.com. Check us out on social media through Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Got an aviation video project in mind? To collaborate with or hire Angle of Attack, reach out and let's talk. Thanks for coming along on this adventure, and I hope you'll join us on the next journey. Until next time, throttle on.